G'day everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter. It's episode 129 for August 24th, 2021, and I hope everybody is doing okay. And let's jump right into things. So, uh, right behind me, as you can see, is another quilt. This is a laps, uh, lap quilt, and this is one for my own design. It is a Christmas quilt, and it's going to be a gift for my uh, hairstylist. And uh, I haven't got it layered yet, and I haven't got it quilted yet, as you can see. But this started out as a, actually a patterned quilt, meaning that I had a pattern that I wanted to follow. And I started following that pattern and I didn't like it uh, with these fabrics. I thought I would, but I didn't. So I started to alter it and just one thing went to another. Yet Now, yes, it is a very busy quilt. It looks like I used every piece of Christmas fabric in my stash. Uh, I didn't, <laughs> but it looks that way. And, uh, but that's okay because to me, it's festive looking. Um, it's not something that sits out all year round. Christmas is full of, let's face it, Christmas is full of a lot of gaudy decorations, isn't it? Uh, when you really think about it. Uh, but we use the excuse of Christmas for, you know, going over the top with decorations. So this quilt's a little over the top, I guess. In the center, I do have a embroidered piece. Um, from where you're seeing this from, the distance from the camera, uh, that's not so easy to see. But uh, the reason it's there is not because I'm trying to hide a mistake, but I had one solid square in the center, uh, about an eight inch square, and uh, it just looks stark uh, for the centers. There need to be a focal point. So I embroidered a set of uh, gold bells uh, hanging from holly with a bow, but I did them on top of another piece of the same fabric. And then when I applicate it to this, I um, basically put a round border in sat black satin stitch um, to make it pop a little bit out from the uh, background square. And I actually used my circular, so, cir circular, circular sewing tool to do the satin stitch and also to sew down, to adhere, the applique itself. There is some steam seam on the back of this as well, but I do have it securely sewn here as well. And you really can't see the stitching that's holding it down because I did it in the same color as the background. And... Uh, yeah, another use for the circular sewing tool. And on a previous episode of Idiot Quilter, I showed you that, I demoed it. I'm not even sure which episode it is. It's back there somewhere. Go for a hunt and you'll find it if you're interested. So yeah, this is coming along nicely. Now, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do the back. Um, you gotta look at my stash of Christmas fabric. I don't think I have enough to do uh, one one continuous piece. I may have to do a piece back and I'm thinking if I do a piece back there's a couple of ways I can go here. I might just do uh, two pieces of Christmas fabric and down the center of those two pieces I will attach maybe uh, a series of flying geese like I have on the front uh, using the same fabric as the flying geese on the front or I might I might actually do a crumb back or as a video that I saw the other day, a lady was putting together all her little pieces and it was called, she called it uh, a, a trash quilt at the end. That might look really interesting. It might be a good way to get rid of all my little pieces and scraps of uh, Christmas fabric. I don't know yet. I don't know how much time I want to spend on that because that will take a while, I think. Well, maybe not. It might not take that long. Well, we'll see. Okay, and I have finished four in my series of Christmas table toppers of the what I call the elegant Santa ones. Here it is. Here's one of them. And I think they've turned out pretty good. And if you look very carefully in the upper red square, you can see an example of what I did for quilting on this. Uh, I used walk, a walking foot, but I went around in a continuous wavy line. So it's got this kind of pattern to it, which I think is kind of cool. And this is the back if you're interested. Um, so yeah, I'm very pleased with how these have turned out. So I now have eight Christmas table toppers that are going to be gifts, but I was doing my list of who I'm giving these things to um, the other day and found I need, probably I need about 12 of these. So I'm gonna make a couple of more of the gnomes and a couple of more of the um, elegant Santa ones as well. And then of course, those are all going to come with 
a pin cushion. The Santa ones will get a Santa pin cushion. He's made out of rainbow, 3D printed. And I've got almost enough of these made now. I think I need about one more. And then of course I showed you last week the gnome ones, which will go with the gnome table toppers. So, <clears throat> and if I have time, I'm debating, I might make a simple sack to put all of these things in as well, out of Christmas fabric. I don't know if I will or not. Actually, for the quilt, I think I will. I'm trying to talk Walter into making that because Walter makes beautiful bags. Um, so, but right now he's very busy with uh, his latest project, which he's not happy with at all. This just as an aside, Walter, of course, makes garments and he's taking an online class. He's been doing this for over a year. Uh, with the same teacher. It's a, a guy that we know that teaches this. He's really good. And um, the, the latest project is to make a tunic. Well, you know, who wears a tunic? I mean, maybe a woman can get away with a tunic, but, you know, tunics aren't something that are common uh, in this country for, well, I'll just say it, Caucasian males. <laughs> okay. Um, and, uh, I mean, I'm not trying to be, you know, politically incorrect or anything, but it's just not a look that we're used to, okay? At least I certainly am not, and Walter certainly is not, but he decided to take the class anyways because he figured he'd learn something, and he is. He's learning he hates making this one. He's had a lot of, a lot of problems with it, but he's persevering, as Walter always does, so um, we'll, he'll probably show us the final product when he gets it done, and it'll probably go in a closet somewhere and never see this uh, daylight again. Who knows? But anyways, <clears throat> excuse me uh, for that. I'm just getting a little frog in my throat. So uh, what else? Okay. Um, went to Ultimate Sewing. Bought a few things. Of course I did. Um, I wanted... There's a line of fabric that I had mentioned before by Northcott called It's, it's in Batiks. Banyan Techniques, uh, Techniques, Batiks. It's too early in the morning. I shouldn't start these at like 6.30 in the morning. Um, and there's a line called Luster. Uh, and I really liked it. And it's the one I went to try to get at that quilt store uh, when we were coming uh, away, coming back from our little uh, overnight trip to Welland and Niagara Falls area, and they didn't have any. So... I went in and saw Shirley. Shirley hadn't heard of it. She looked it up, found it, said, yeah, that's great, and ordered some of it. Um, I was a little disappointed in what she ordered. Maybe she couldn't get the whole line because there's much more here than what I bought. Um, but I'll show you what I got. This was the one I saw that I really fell in love with. And so I had to have ones that would pick up more of the colors. Almost looks a little Halloween-ish, doesn't it? but I'm not using it for Halloween. And then I got a dark one. Now there was a light, but I really didn't like the light. And the reason being is it looked like it was bleached out. Actually, they do use bleach when they make uh, batiks, I have found out. So maybe that was part of the process, but that one I just found was a way, a little, there was something about it I just didn't like. So I didn't buy any of that, but that's all she had of this, at least in the colorways. So yesterday I went online to the quilt store in um, a place that's an hour and a half from us, but I've ordered from them before and I have reviewed that online store here on The Idiot Quilter. And uh, I purchased a couple of more in colors in the colorway. They didn't have much to offer either. So I don't know if it's been selling out fast or not. Now, it's supposedly on its way. Of course, it hasn't arrived for me to show it on here but maybe I'll show it next uh, Idiot Quilter episode. Uh, and of course, people are going to ask me, what are you gonna do with these? I have no idea. They're just pretty. They'll go to the collection. But while I was in Ultimate Sewing, I wanted to pick up some more Halloween fabric because I've got this panel I wanna work on. I think I showed that to you last week. And um, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do with that panel, but I figured I'm gonna need some more fabric anyways for it so I picked this one up and uh, funny I showed this yesterday on my vlog it must be the lighting it turned look more blue than purple but it is a purple background and of course you got to have pumpkins right 
So I have these two and that'll fill out the uh, set. And there was some new Tim Holtz fabric she had there. I think it's from the Abandoned line, uh, Abandoned 2, I think he calls it. And you know, I love his fabrics too. So I had to pick up this one. Really like the colors in that. And I think it might go with the other ones, with these luster too. Might be a little much, but you know, potential. And this one by Tim Holtz as well. Now, I picked this one up because of the colors, oranges and yellows. I do not usually work with oranges and yellows, but in the case of Halloween, I will. And I thought, just in case I need another colorway in whatever it is I'll create uh, with this Halloween panel, I, I got this, because this would be okay as a background uh, fabric as well. So those were my purchases at uh, Ultimate. Oh, and I did pick up, and I don't usually buy books, magazines in quilting, because you can get most of the stuff online. But I did see this, and I thought this might have some ideas in it for how I can handle this panel that I have. Now, this doesn't really show a panel, but there is a page marked. I thought that block design could be adapted as a sort of a border uh, motif all the way around the panel as well depending on how I do it. This is only going to be a wall hanging. Um, I may have to reduce the size of these. I don't know. We'll see. I haven't really explored this. I just put a page mark in here because this grabbed my interest. Um, it would make it a nice quilt in itself too. So actually, if I have fabric left over or whatever from this, I might consider actually making another quilt. And the thing is, this one doesn't have to be specifically Halloween. It's using Halloween fabrics, but you might get away with it as a fall quilt. Speaking of which, I have a box, a project box, with another panel in it. And I think I've already put the, uh, the fabric in there that I want to use for it as well for a fall quilt. Mm -hmm. Lots of projects. Oh, and speaking of Halloween, I found this online the other day had to have it. It's a freestanding lace design. It's for a witch's cauldron. I haven't started making it yet, but yeah, another Halloween decoration. You know, there was a day in an age when Halloween came around. I did not decorate. I refused to decorate. Like we have people in our neighborhood who have special lights and sound effects and all kinds of things. And they have it up for a month before Halloween. Um, then they replace it all with Christmas. Um, you know, those are the kind of people that love to decorate all year round for whatever season or for whatever occasion. I am not one of those kind of people, or at least I wasn't. I'm starting to become one of those kind of people. It started last year with uh, the haunted mansions that I did that were freestanding lace. And this year I'm going to add to that with some 3D printed objects I have. And I do have some Halloween table runners that I've made. Got to locate those. And, uh, yeah, so yeah, I guess I am one of those kind of people now that decorates for Halloween. Okay, so what else? Yes, uh, alt, speaking of ultimate sewing, we, we were in the store the other day. Uh, one of the staff people, Donna, if you were on my retreat last spring, you saw a video I made with Donna, and Donna was also at the retreat as well, as I call her, the hostess with the mostest. And uh, Donna, took me aside and said she asked me if Walter and I would help out with a retreat that Ultimate Sewing is thinking of trying to have, not until March of 2022, um, pending all the circumstances, what, what sta state we're in at that point in time. And I said, yes, of course. Um, we had done this for the last retreat uh, Ultimate Sewing had, had a lot of fun doing it. And so I got out my notes from the last one. I had to do a few revisions because there were a couple of things we did that uh, I didn't think worked out as best as they could. So I've written up the plan. I've sent it off to Donna. Donna says she loves it. So I've got lots of time, but you know me, I like to start ahead on things. So I'll start over the next few weeks, few months, getting things organized and ready for all of that. And it should be a hoot. And I hope that we'll be able to have the retreat. <sighs> Who knows? Who knows? Okay, so that takes me to my de demo for this episode. And um, I've heard a lot of people 
I thought it was just people took this just for, or I took this just for granted. Wow, if I got rented lips today, coffee. Don't I say that on all, all my videos? Anyways, a lot of people don't realize, and I'm surprised at this, that there are little tools you can buy to thread a needle. Not just a hand sewing needle, but your needle on your sewing machine. Um, the, and a lot of sewing machines now come with an automatic threader. However, the automatic threaders are the bane of our existence because they do break and they seem to break for some people like two days after they've gotten the sewing machine. Um, I have figured out how to fix them when they do that and I would dearly love to give you a video of that and show you how, but I can't. It's one of those things that you have to feel around for. Um, it's also very awkward to uh, video it. But uh, last week or the week before, I did put a link into a YouTube video uh, where a guy in England shows you how to fix a automatic threader. Um, however, you know, when this happens to you, and if you don't want to try and fix it yourself, uh, then what are you going to do? You're going to have to thread it manually. Well, <laughs> if your eyes are like mine, I can't see that bloody needle. So how do I thread it? So that's why I made this little demo video to show you exactly what I do and how I get around that problem. Today I thought I'd show you how to use one of these. I'll just pull it back here. This is a Dritz, there's other brands, uh, needle threader. And how does this work? Well, you basically slide it down the shaft of your needle with your thread in here. It hooks it through the eye and you pull back and that's all there is to it. It works very well. There are two ends to this. This end has the little hook. And so if I push this down, maybe I can show you the little hook. There's the little hook right there. And that's what grabs your thread. The other end is for inserting your needle. You just put your needle down into this hole and you can slide it right up into the mechanism and it works really well for that. But let's concentrate on needle threading. So all you need to do is take your thread. Let me get some thread out here. Feed it in between these two little V's. There's two little V's. I hope you can see that. You put your thread in there and there's a little hook here. So you want that up and just slide it over to your needle and then slide it down the shaft of the needle slowly and pushing in just lightly until you feel well, okay, that would help if I, had, okay. <laughs> I've got a little bit too much tension on my thread here. How oh, come? Yeah, that's better. Set it up properly, that would help, wouldn't it? Yeah, okay, so like I said, you put the thread in here, place it along the shaft of your needle, slide down as you push in slightly, and you'll feel the little wire on the needle threader go through the eye of the needle. Carefully pull it back out, and there should be a little loop of thread right here. And this is where the hook comes in. Now sometimes, I'm not doing this well, people, I'm sorry. Sometimes you don't get a very big loop or you'll pull it right through. Now I'm having trouble grabbing it right now. Oh, there we go, I've got it. So then pull it through. Okay, this is going completely bad. Okay, let me start this again. Let's just clip my thread out of there. Usually, it figures when I'm showing this on camera, I don't have this kind of problem with threading my needle with this. Okay, place it in the V, put it on the shaft, slide down till you feel it go through. Find the little hoop. Now, sometimes you can just do it with your fingers and I can in this case. Other times you might want to use the little hook on there. And there you go. I'm threaded. It's that easy. So this is a great little device. It's by Dritz. You can get them online or you can get them at your local quilting store. I have several of them. Um, and when my automatic threader on my machine is not working, I will 
reach, we'll get the right end so you can see it, I will reach for this. So those uh, little things are uh, easy to pick up. Um, now, if you buy one at your quilt store, you may be paying top dollar for it. You could be paying as much as $9.99 for one of those. You can get them at Walmart for about $4.99. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, I can't remember, because I did buy some at uh, Walmart, if, whether they were Dritz or just a, a knockoff. I think they were a knockoff, and to be honest, they kind of broke. Uh, so I went on Amazon, and I bought them there. And you could get like a three-pack or something like that for about $15 or whatever. So I, I kind of stocked up on them, um, because before I figured out how to fix my automatic needle threader, I was using that a lot. Um, and I still use them occasionally because, you know, one thing, just as a little aside and it's a tip, read your manual about your automatic threader because the reason that people uh, break their uh, automatic thread threader uh, within the second day of using their sewing machine is because they didn't read the instructions properly and they put too thick of a thread uh, into it. Um, it can only handle certain sizes, so check your manual for that and stick to that. But that doesn't mean you can't use thicker thread in your sewing machine. You just may not be able to use your automatic threaders. And that's where one of these little Dritz threaders would come in really handy uh, for that kind of situation. Okay, so that takes us to Subscribers Quilt of the Week. This is from Jennifer Brooks, one of my regular subscribers. And uh, yeah, I'm going to share this with you right now. This week's quilt from a subscriber is from Jennifer Brooks, and she says, Hi Stephen, my name is Jen Brooks, and I've been watching you on YouTube since this blasted pandemic began. I originally watched The Idiot Quilter, but now I love to watch you and Walter. Well, I hope you'll continue to watch The Idiot Quilter. I made this quilt with my grandmother in my heart. The colors remind me of her sewing room, and obviously the dog likes it too. I just got... Uh, sorry, it's a modified ocean waves pattern. I used mostly 1930s and 1940s reproduction fa fabrics. I just got a long arm and quilting was done with a straight and one curved ruler. I watched Michael Davison from the Quarter Squared Quilts for tips and inspiration on ruler quilting. Well, you did a wonderful job on this. I love the uh, flowers in the center if you call them that and I think your quilting goes very well with the fabric that you have picked. Well done. Anyway your channel is great and I look forward to it each week. Take care. Well thank you Jen for sending these quilts to me. Um, they definitely have that 1930s vintage look to them. Everything from your fabric choices right down to the way that you've quilted it. So you should be very proud of this particular quilt. I think it's lovely and looks like your dog likes it too. So thank you, Jen, for sending that to me. And that takes me to my show notes for today. Now, something coming up. I forgot to mention this on my vlog yesterday. So if you're a regular viewer of my vlog, um, you might have wondered why I hadn't mentioned this, because I forgot, September's creeping up on us, isn't it? I didn't realize that come one week from tomorrow, tomorrow's Wednesday here, when I'm recording this, it's September 1st. Yeah. Now here where I live, basically that's the official end of summer. Summer technically doesn't end until about the 20th or 21st of September, but because it's September and the kids are going back to school, whether it's COVID style schooling or regular schooling, uh, the summer's over. And I hate to see it run out. But this summer, huh, well, you know, this summer. Same as last summer. I hope next summer's gonna be better. But before I go down the road of despair here, um, I want to talk about something uplifting and that is it's time for craft and chat yes the first wednesday of every month is craft and chat and september the first happens to be the first wednesday of september so we will be having it i have the link the zoom link for that below you know that everyone is welcome it's very relaxed it's a time to get caught up on some of our projects have you know general friendly chit chat and be inspired so please join us uh, don't be shy. If you're available, it starts at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, my time, and runs for about three hours until about four o'clock in the afternoon. Come and go as you please. 
work on whatever you want to work on doesn't have to be sewing or quilting it can be a craft whatever um, I look forward to seeing my regulars and I'm looking forward to welcoming new people on here as well so that's craft and chat one week from this Wednesday so September the 1st 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time join us and there's a link to latest uh, so chatty number 22 we call it the psychology of fabric um, I kind of got away from that topic but basically we talked about what it is about fabric why we buy it why have we ever bought ugly fabric yes we have bought ugly fabric what are we going to do in that case and we sort of leaped over into briefly about storage of fabric as well and speaking of storage of fabric I have altered the way I store fabric and I have made a video of this and I'll be showing it next week on the next episode but I'm really pleased with what I've done and I'm looking at a beautiful wall of fabric right now in fact before I couldn't really see all my fabric like I can right now and uh, yeah I might have a problem <laughs> I look like a fabric store but that's for next week and actually I've extended it to a, another little tour of my sewing studio sewing room sewing area whatever sewing dungeon is basically what I call it uh, because the last time I did one of those I've made some changes and things so I thought well what the heck if I'm going to show you what I've done with the fabric I might as well show you the whole kit and caboodle so I am but that's for next week okay so I Let's see, what am I talking about? Yeah, lose my train of thought right off the track. Oh, yes, I've got a link to this uh, uh, pattern of the week that I'm going to talk about and to the YouTube channel of the week and to the fabric online fabric store of the week as well, along with links to my three favorite fabric stores. Okay, so that takes us to the YouTube channel of the week. Uh, this is one for those of you that are really into machine quilting, uh, especially long arm quilting. Uh, I stumbled upon this by accident. Actually, I think it was recommended to me by one of the viewers. And thank you for that recommendation. You know, I really got to remember who recommends these things so I can give you a shout out. Um, so I apologize to this person because I forgot who it was. Okay, I'm old. Memory's not what it used to be. What can I say? Um, but this is called Michael Quilts. And yeah, um, I think you'll find this very, very useful. So here's my review of that website. This week's YouTube channel of the week is called Michael Quilts. And this one is a site that was suggested by Jen Brooks, who we just saw her uh, lovely quilt creation. And she says that she's watched a lot of these and learned a lot about uh, quilting from this particular site so I thought I would check it out and yes if you're into uh, doing some long arm quilting and using rulers and possibly free motion this might be the site for you if you take a look at the list of videos we have long arm custom machine quilting uh, fans um, Granada uh, full time free fun time free motion time um, and there's a lot. There are a lot of videos about doing long arm quilting. So I think this would be a wealth of information. I did not know this site existed at all. Uh, let's just check out his playlists. Um, doesn't seem to have any playlists, so the videos are here. Now he does have quite a few subscribers, 2.59k, and I'm just looking to see if I can figure out how long he has been online. It looks like he started this about a year ago. At least the oldest video is uh, a year ago. So relatively new YouTube channel. I would say this would be a great channel to explore if you want to learn about long arm quilting. So check it out. I've got the link in the show notes. It's called Michael Quilts. So that takes me to uh, another pattern that hangs on my vision board for possibly being completed in the future. And this is by Alex Anderson. And Alex Anderson, if you don't know who she is, uh, is a guru in the quilting industry. She and Timmy, uh, Timmy, sorry, <laughs> Ricky Timms. <laughs> okay, take a pill. Uh, Ricky Timms. Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms uh, own and operate the Quilt Show TV 
uh, channel on YouTube. It's a member. It's not on YouTube. It's uh, a website. It's a membership site, but lots and lots of stuff. Um, I'm really glad that I joined it. Forty nine dollars American for a year. It is well worth it. I can tell you that. But Alex uh, comes out with a pattern every so often. And she actually has a series of tutorials that go along with this. I think she made this into sort of a sew along at one point, but it's called spinning spools. And I think it's really quite cool. Um, a lot of applique, however, on this. And this is why I say, mm, if I want a challenge, this one be it. Um, I kind of like doing applique and I, I imagine this is raw edge applique. So yeah, um, so it's on my vision wall for future consideration. Uh, I love the colors that she used in it, but of course I like bright and bold, beautiful colors. Uh, you can do it anything you like, but it looks like she used solids in this. Um, I don't usually work with a lot of solids as a, you know, as my focal fabrics in, in a quilt. Maybe I should break out of my box and try that. So this would be a great opportunity to do so. So, um, yeah, Spinning Spools by Alex Anderson. And there is a link to this pattern and the pattern is free. Uh, you download it as a PDF. And I think if you go to the quiltshow.com, uh, uh, you can still get maybe the fabrics or a kit to do this. I'm not really sure about that, whether the kit is still available or not. And I'm not even sure if you have to be a member of that to to order things from them. I don't think you do. I think their store is open to anybody uh, on there. So you might want to check that out, especially if you like to do applique. Okay, so that takes us to um, what would have been uh, a teaser for this week's interview. I don't have an interview this week. Why don't I have an interview? Because you did not uh, tell me you wanted to be interviewed. Come on, don't be shy. I want to interview you. Having said that, I do have two interviews I'm doing later this week. So the next two episodes, I will have an interview uh, to show you, but I have nothing this week. So sorry about that. It's your fault. You didn't volunteer to be interviewed. Okay. Enough said about that. Um, so that takes me to my critique of one of my quilts. This is a quilt I did not too long ago, so you have seen it before, but this time I'm going to look at it from a more critical point of view. And it is what I call a carpenter's wheel quilt, but I made some changes. Of course I did. This week's quilt of my own that I wish to critique is one that you saw not so long ago because this is fairly much a recent finish. It's called a carpenter's wheel, but it's my spin on it. Haha, did you see what I did there? Bit of a pun, right? Okay, the center motif is the actual carpenter's wheel and it's a pattern that I think it was a freebie pattern that I had for that but as you can see it was very very small so what I did was I built all the rest of the design around that center motif and there's a lot of negative space on this quilt I did border pieces that have colors of blue that radiate out from the center uh, in various shades. And then from there, I do my other borders in purple and a little uh, wider one in sort of a blue uh, gradient uh, fabric. Now, I think this quilt turned out very nice and I'm especially proud of my quilting on this because my quilting was all done. It, it's uh, free motion and a combination of free motion and walking foot quilting. Um, I did plan this one out. I laid a big plastic sheet down on top of the quilt itself and used some dry erase markers and marked out what I wanted to do. Of course, like anything, I uh, deviated from that plan. So what I originally had drawn on the plastic wasn't necessarily what I ended up with. Now I did run into a problem and I don't know if you notice it or not, but if you look at the top and the bottom purple borders, 
they're a little overextended. I am not sure exactly what I did that caused that problem and why I did it that way. But you know, I could have uh, gotten rid of that. But I decided to leave it in because it's a little bit of a detail that makes it a little different. Again, you know how I like to take a pattern and play with it and make it my own. Well, that's exactly what I did with this quilt. Now, I do not have a picture of the back, but I believed I used uh, backing fabric that is the same as what's in the wide uh, outside border for that. So I was very pleased with the end result of this quilt. And yeah, it may not be truly a carpenter's wheel, but that's what inspired me to make it. So that takes me now to my review of this week's online fabric store, Canadian fabric store, of course, because that's what I'm reviewing in this series, only Canadian fabric stores. And you know, as uh, just as an aside here, I have found our country is a wealth of online fabric stores which I never knew before. Maybe it's because they don't have the same presence in social media that many of the ones in the States do. Everybody knows, you know, things like Missouri Star Quilt, Jordan Fabrics, um, On Point TV, uh, what's the one, uh, Shabby Fabrics, um, all those ones. Everybody knows about those because they have a very strong social presence. And this is something that maybe Canadian uh, online stores need to think about and do as well. But I'm doing my part for those stores because I have got a couple of years worth <laughs> of reviews I can do about Canadian uh, online fabric stores. And this is one more to the set and it's called Blue Barn Quilt Company. Now I've never ordered from them, um, so I judge my opinions in my reviews based upon what I find on their website or on their, yeah, on their website. So I'm going to show you that review right now. This week's online quilting store is called the Blue Barn Quilt Company, and this is another Canadian company. Now, I have never ordered anything from them, so we're going to explore this together. So here's their home page, and we can see at a glance what they have to offer. They have quilts and supplies, they have professional quilting services, and looks like classes on, on how to long arm quilt. Um... Let's see, what else did it say? They are a boutique quilt shop and long arm quilting studio just 30 minutes west of Edmonton, Alberta. Seems funny, but an awful lot of quilting stores seem to come from the Alberta, from the Edmonton and Calgary area. Um, they have quilting cottons from Liberty of London Art Gallery Fabrics. I know Art Gallery Fabrics because I have bought some of their patterns before. Uh, Tilda, Figo, Wyndham, Ruby Star Society, Moda, and more. So it looks like they have a lot of the main brands. They have a long arm quilting service, um, fireside backing and binding fabrics, and 108 inch wide back cottons, Quilter's Dream batting. So they also have a monthly fabric club, um, Blue Barn Quilt Guild. So they look like they sponsor a guild as well. And they'll give you 10% off on your first long arm quilting order. So that looks pretty good. And here's what's new in the shop, they say. So Liberty Festive Collection of Fat Quarters. Uh, they have a bundle by Kate and Bertie from Moda. Looks almost like this is Christmas fabric right here. Uh, cozy and Joyful Fat Quarter Bundle. Okay, and they have a newsletter. Receive 10% off your first long arm quilting surface when you sign up for a newsletter. Okay, so that's just on their homepage and that's given us quite a bit of information uh, about them. So let's jump right into shopping because you know how I like to do that. And I am liking the way they have laid this out. Um, it's very clear what they have to offer. So let's go to fabric and quilting supplies. So you can do a search, I assume by brand name or color or something like that. Fabrics, notions, patterns, batting, kits and bundles. Well, let's take a look at the fabric and see what their prices are like and what they have to offer. AGF floral elements, pure solids, Andover, art gallery fabrics, 
six, fat 16th bundles. That's interesting. 16th bundles. Fat 8th bundles. Fat quarter bundles. And so they're listing everything by, it looks like, the manufacturer. Let's take a look at Liberty of London because I don't think I've ever bought any of their fabrics before. So they have a lot of bundles. And yeah, they have a lot of bundles. Okay, here we go. Ooh, this is expensive. Now, I don't know if it's the line of fabric. $45 per yard. Okay, here we go. Canadian company doing things in yards again. You know how I feel about that. I want to see it in meters. Wow. It's all $45 per yard. Okay, maybe it's Liberty of London that's that. Let's go back and let's look at something that's I'm a little bit more familiar with. Um, Wyndham fab Fabrics. I think I have some of their, their fabrics. Okay, a little bit more reasonable. So it must have to do with the Liberty of London fabrics. It must be a very expensive line. I wonder. I don't know much about Liberty. Uh, maybe they come directly from England, and that would put the price up. So the Wyndham are about the average price, $20 again by yard. But they're nicely laid out here. Ooh, that's pretty. $140 for the bundle. Okay, hold back, hold back, hold back. Yeah, no. I'm not buying anything today. I'm just reviewing. So let's carry on in the shopping and take a look at their, uh, well, we can right here look at their long arm quilting services. Now, of course, let's just say, finishing your beautiful quilts is the heart of Blue Barn Quilt Company. We've worked hard to offer you the most flexible and broad range of quilting options available. If you experience any problems with entering an order, we'd like to hear from you. Okay. Do they have prices? Pattern, thread, batting, bat. So it looks here total. Oh, I guess you can pick each of the elements of what you're having long-armed. Indicate the number of square inches of your submitted quilt. No fractions in the quantity box of your chosen pattern. Okay, this is interesting. So here we go. It looks like it's three cents per square inch. And... Yeah, so that's what they're selling, selling here, and they show you what the patterns are that are available. So obviously this is all being done by computer. And I'm just wondering if they do custom quilting. Oh, geez, that goes on for days. Let's scroll down to the bottom. Well, that one's cheap. Two inches per square. <laughs> no, that's a simple uh, meander. But okay, so three... three cents a square inch and then there's thread okay so all right so that's a service but it's kind of uh, uh, an interesting way of setting it up i haven't seen this before so you basically pick each part that you want and put it all together and you get a total so okay i guess that's great if you want somebody else to quilt your quilt they have long arm courses and machine rental as well so i guess you can go into the store and uh, rent their machine if you know what you're doing. Um, let's see, what else have they got? Let's go back to quilting supplies. Let's take a look at their notions. And their notions. They have AGF Pure Solids color cards, coffee snob thread gloss, diagonal seam tape, English paper piecing, Heather's Chai Thread Gloss. Okay, that's all they have in Notions? That seems very limited. So really, they're not, they don't have a lot of uh, Notions, I guess. Is there anything else that I missed in here? Patterns and Books. They have Fireside, which is basically Cuddle. Uh, their batting, kits and bundles, monthly fabric clubs. Well, let's check out their batting just to see price-wise. Looks like they deal with Dream, Quilter's Dream. And, yeah, prices are about standard. 
for that. Uh, let's go back and let's check out their kits and bundles because you know I love my pre-cuts. Uh, okay, there's some pre-orders. I don't like pre-orders. And they've got some kits. This kit with the houses is kind of cute. $230, 82 by 82. Mm, bundle prices seem, I think they're in the ballpark. I don't think there's any bargains to be had here, but then again, I don't think that it's overpriced either. And they do seem to have quite a number to choose from, although they really like the Liberty fabrics. And the Liberty fabrics have a very vintage look to them. So if you're looking for vintage fabrics, this may be the place to go. Okay, so let's just go back here. Very easy to na navigate this site, I must say. So let's check out their monthly fabric club and see what that's all about. They offer an assortment of monthly fabric clubs. There's a club for everyone. Each club is available to be automatically purchased on a monthly or annual basis. If you choose the annual club, you will get one month free, shipping and tax, etc. Now, I have never joined a fabric club at all. Um, I'm not really sure that I would want to get involved with something like that. Now, they have a join the wait list. And here's their different things. AGF. I'm going to click. A fat quarter 10 pack. Enjoy receiving a monthly assortment of 10 specially curated fat quarters from Art Gallery Fabrics, Figo Fabrics, Ruby Star Society, and more. Each month will be unique and exciting, a great way to add to your stash. Join when the membership doors are open and canceling time. Shipping and taxes are extra. Because you're buying for 12 months, you're getting one month free. Let the happy mail begin. But what is the cost? Okay, they're not really telling us how much this costs, and I don't like that. I want to know up front. It looks like if I put my name on the waiting list, they'll get back to me, and yeah, that they have lots to choose from, but I have no idea how much these cost. I don't like that. I'd like to see prices up front. Um, shipping and taxes are extra, it says on this as well. Okay. Um, what else? What about their shipping? Well, let's go under About Us and see if there's anything here about shipping. They're 30 minutes west of Edmonton. Um, the person in here has been quilting for 20 years. And nothing here about shipping. Anything down here. Let's see if it's under shopping. No, it is not. Okay, this is something I do not like either. I want to know how much shipping is going to be costing me. Let's go back to the home button and see if it's there. Nope. And they're open by appointment. Okay, I guess that's for the long arm. Uh, business. So they have an, some place where you can go and do your own quilting, but it doesn't look like they have a actual store to, for buying the fabrics. Now maybe in their area where their long arm is, you can. Um, I'm still looking for shipping and I'm not finding it. So if I go to cart, uh, my current cart is empty, yes, because I haven't put anything into it. Okay, so I find that disappointing. Um, I could try to stick something in the cart and see what happens. I'm just going to pick something here at random. Oh, they do have quarter yards. Okay, um, well, let's put in a yard, add to cart. Cart. And would you like some more goods? No. 
uh, flat rate okay they have a flat rate standard shipping 1095 now I don't know if they have um, you know uh, a minimum uh, like if you if you buy over a certain amount if you'll get free shipping there's nothing here that says that okay I'm not impressed by their shipping although that's not a lot of money but I wonder if it goes up if you add more things to it but let's just see let's put in four of this update cart and let's see nope still flat rate is 1095 so okay that's not bad that's not bad and of course all these uh, figures are in Canadian dollars uh, so let's just eliminate that cart before we go any further because I don't want that okay so overall um, the site is very manageable uh, great site to go for vintage fabrics uh, prices are okay uh, I'm not impressed with the prices on the Liberty fabrics but like I said they may be a very specialized kind of company so that's maybe why things are costing what they do they do have uh, long arm quilting services as well so if you lived in the area I think that might be a good thing and shipping seems to be very reasonable at a flat rate of 1095 so overall it might be something to check out as I said if you're into vintage fabrics or you want bundles because they did seem to have quite a few of those so that's the blue barn quilt company Okay, so that takes us to the end of this episode of The Idiot Quilter. And uh, just some final thoughts here. Um, I've already mentioned the fact that I need people to interview seriously. I also would love for you to suggest YouTube channels or websites that you go to on a regular basis that you find very helpful that you'd like me to check out and review. Um, that would be great because uh, I'm always looking for new ones to review there as well. And if you know of some online fabric stores that are Canadian that you think I should be checking out, send those along to me as well. All of this material you can either send directly to me through my email address, which is always in the show notes, or you can just add it as a comment uh, below this video. Um, so, also don't forget, one week from tomorrow, September the 1st, and I'll be reminding you because there'll be an Idiot Quilter episode before uh, September the 1st, uh, that we have craft and chat. The more, the merrier. So I hope you have a great week. I hope you feel very creative and inspired this week, and I hope you go out there and create something beautiful. So we'll see you for the next episode of the Idiot Quilter. Bye for now.